My name is Alex uh, Grinswag, but you know, people call me Grin. Pretty much everybody calls me Grin. Uh, and I work at Library. I'm one of the founders and CTO of Library. And I'm looking forward to learning about some stuff that I know less about than uh, Be Fresh. Should I call you Be Fresh? You can call me Hunter. Hunter? If you want. That big H over there, yeah. Hunter. <laughs> nice. All right. Hunter. You said you're. Uh, you're in the city, right? Well, yeah, I'm actually right above New York, like literally, like like in the little, little suburbs of uh, of New York, essentially, right above the city. Yeah. Nice, nice, beautiful. And then, you know, right, I, yeah, go for it. You know, I, I of course, just for people who are watching on, on your channel as well, uh, you know, I am a crypto content creator. I uh, graduated with a degree of mechanical engineering about it was a year and a half ago up until this point. And I decided to, you know, go ahead and instead of getting an engineering job, make some videos about crypto. So that's where we're at today. <laughs> but nice. yeah, so so today we're just going to be kind of going over like DeFi because, um, you know, obviously I know Grin you know, was having a lot of had a lot of different questions about it um, and just, just talking about I'm sure library a little bit later as well. But so kind of just going over like, like your initial thoughts and. Like maybe what you already know about DeFi. Like what are you or what are you already familiar with about uh, decentralized finance? Sure, uh, I'm familiar with. Um, there's a kind of a bunch of little pieces to it, and uh, they're, they're kind of like Legos, and you, people put them together to create all sorts of different interesting products. You know, uh, kind of replicating some of the um, products you can get in the traditional stock market, right? You could there's loans, lending, there's like uh, short selling. They have short selling at. Yes, technically. There, there is short, there is technically Short-selling. shorts, yes. All sorts of derivatives. And uh, yeah, I'm curious how they work. I'm curious about like the protocols themselves, how they talk to each other. Um, curious about what the value is. Um, I think I get some of it, but uh, there's yeah. a lot I don't get. Oh, yeah. I mean, and also to be clear for people who are obviously are watching this who are familiar with DeFi, I'm not positioning myself as an expert on DeFi, just someone who knows more than the average Joe, you know, <laughs> on the street. And of course, obviously, I try to do my research. But yeah, so I mean, as you're familiar with, you know, most of DeFi is based off of Ethereum, right? I mean, you know, it's kind of what right. pioneered DeFi, Ethereum. Uh, but like Uniswap, I know you mentioned that you, you, you had used it at some point, right? Right. So like, I think Uniswap is probably like the like the obviously the uh, the most generic like point of view of what DeFi is, right? The the ability to uh, exchange your crypto for like without having to provide your information to a centralized exchange, without having to um, you know like give ownership of your crypto to someone else. You know you're keeping ownership of your, your tokens or coins, um, but at the same time having the ability to almost like literally like peer to peer swaps of people, just trade it back and forth. Um, but so you familiar? Right, so that's like contracts on Ethereum, exactly. and it's. Uh, and it's like you put in, so I, I know that it's there's a bonding curve. You put in like both assets and then the curve figures out based on the ratio of the assets um, what the price is, right? So you can buy one, sell the other. And and the nice thing is it's always there, right? Like on an exchange, sometimes you don't have the depth. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it, it is it is it is funny because it is like a different type of like, a, it's, you know, a market making strategy, right? I mean, that's what a Uniswap is, like an automated market maker. And they, of course, <laughs> use uh, liquidity pools. Uh, you know, again, like for that bonding curve you mentioned, right? Um, and I think, like, that's what, I mean, to me, like, you know, because, I mean, I, I just started getting into uh, DeFi and all that stuff. It was, like, I mean, last year, of course. Um, but just how it all works and how, the like, the fact that, you know, there's not only Uniswap that exists, right? There's, you know, I mean, I'm not going to include other change, but they're, like, one, there's one inch, which is, you know, similar to Uniswap. Yep. But I think they're a little bit uh, more, I think they're a little, a little bit better with the gas, the gas prices. Um, you have uh, sushi swap, <laughs> which sushi swap. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between that and Uniswap is, uh, but I do know that sushi swap at some point was like a derivative of Uniswap, um, and they actually came up came out with their own governance token before Uniswap did. Uh, but it's cool that there are so many different um, decentralized exchanges, you know, automated market makers, because uh, that you know opens the opportunity for what do you call it arbitrage trading, which I know is looked down upon in crypto, but it helps keep the prices uh, stable. Because if there was only one, you know, uh, decentralized exchange in this case, then, you know, it'd be really hard to, like, you know, it, would, it would be more centralized at the end of the day, right? This is what it would be. Yeah. I think arbitrage is fine. Like, right, you have rules and you can trade by those rules and you have bots that trade by those rules. That's fine. Yeah, no, exactly. And then, of course, um, yeah, go for it. Go for it. So, 
what what do the exchanges compete on? Like, is it gas prices or is it like volume of different tokens? I would say for the most part, I mean, well, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the, the one thing that exchanges need are users, people using them. But not only that, um, they need, like you said, like volume and they need liquidity, right? Because I think that's the that's the that's the most that's the most, uh, in my opinion, that's uh, the hardest thing to find for these decentralized protocols is liquidity, and that's why like on Uniswap or SushiSwap or whatever it is, they have you know fees that liquidity providers get, you know, in exchange for for giving tokens, right? Um, like for example, you know, I mean, I, I'm not using Ethereum too much because of how expensive it is, but I'm using another protocol, uh, Luna or Terra, I guess it's called. Uh, it's essentially the same thing, but you know, providing liquidity for their governance token and uh, their stable coin, right? So I'm only half exposed to each. Uh, but at the same time, I'm still getting, I think it's 0.3% of all trading fees for anyone who trades uh, those two tokens on that uh, on that pool, right? So, you know, they obviously... You what have, do you use the governance token for? So the governance tokens, uh, they're essentially for like making changes to the protocol itself. So like, you know, I, I, I don't, let me see. I think I think Uniswap might have. Uh, they should have like a uh, like a, like a docs pages or not, not even a docs page, a governance page. And I, let me see if I can go ahead and share. Have you page. used it? I haven't used Uniswap's one just again because of how expensive it is. But they're all relatively the same thing. I mean, they're just different. They're just on different chains and whatnot. All right, I think I can share my screen right here. Bam, uh, bam. There mm -hmm. we go. So like, as you can see, they have their own like governance page. And you should be able to actually go ahead and vote with those governance tokens on the changes that you want to make to the actual protocol itself, right? So as you can see, there's there's a couple of proposals here, and some of them have been some of them have actually gone through, some of them haven't. But that's like the uh, the purpose of having these governance tokens, uh, the ability to pretty much point the direction of the protocol in which you want it to go to, you know. And I and you know depending on the exchange, there's right. different use cases. I mean, some of them that might just be straight up like Gas fees might cost less. Our trading fees uh, might be lowered as well. I think on one inch that's the case. They have their own token for that reason, but you know it just depends. But I think it's mainly for voting in the direction gotcha. which yeah. products want to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So how does Uniswap make money? So the actual protocol itself, I'm pretty. Well, you mean the company itself, right? I'm pretty sure, and I, I could be wrong. On company this one. protocol, yeah. I, I could be wrong in this one, but I'm more than positive it's from like a very small percent of the trading fees. A very small percent. Uh, you know, like nothing where it's like gotcha. egregiously large, or it's like, not, like not, nothing like half a percent, or anything like that. I think it's like point zero zero something percent uh, per trade. You know, right. and that's like that. You know, you, the, you can use the governance token to f kind of set their salary. Yeah, uh, it, that too. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure they also get a piece of the governance token. You know, before before releases. I don't know if Uniswap did, but I know some of the other projects do that. Just because, you know, I mean, obviously. Uh, what I mean is like you can vote on uh, what their what rate they get, right? Like you can vote on what rate, um, what percent of the fees they take. That, I'm actually not sure about that. I mean, I'm sure you can vote on it, right? But I wonder if that actually passed, if they could actually, if they would actually do that. Because <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, so it's not like they don't have to do it? No, nah, it, well, it depends on the protocol, right? I mean, you know, not, not, all, are, not all are created the same, but right. I would think that with mm -hmm. like, Again, for example, Uniswap, since they are, they have, they have like an actual, I guess, I guess you could say they have like a headquarters in Brooklyn somewhere. Um, I would think that even if there was, a, let's say, some sort of proposal passed where it's like, all right, we want to reduce the fees that they get to zero. <laughs> we don't want them to get any money, any funding, for whatever reason. I don't think that they gotcha. that, that could pass because, you know, they're the ones technically still working on it, right? You know, I'm sure like, I mean, actually, if I were to ask you this question, I don't know, you know, you can, you can answer it if you don't want to. Um, yeah. Like, for example, Library, right? And I know Library has like, its own like you know like uh, the company branch to it where there's the protocol is there's a difference to, to both right um but right still like although library is decentralized the protocol itself you know the people behind the company so including yourself cto uh someone needs to be developing it right. you know right right yeah i mean i'm i'm not saying that reducing fees to zero is a good idea i actually no, don't no, think yeah. that's true i think that <laughs> it makes sense to pay people to work on the protocol uh but i i was curious like is that the kind of thing that would just – because some things would just automatically happen, right? Like if you wanted to vote on whether, uh, I don't know, some new pair could be added to the pools, like that's something that contracts can handle all on their own. But voting on what people do is a little bit strange to use as a governance token. You see, that 
that's that, that's kind of exactly what, what I was mentioning. Like they are, and I'm sure a lot, a lot of them do that. I don't know if Uniswap has any has passed anything similar to that. Well, they they, they passed the grants program because at the end of the day, like yeah. all the protocol, all that all that's doing is telling them like where they should where they should end up end up using the money, right? Right? Because it's not forcing them to do it. It's just telling them this is what the community thinks. Mm -hmm. So they don't technically have to like this grants right. program that passed. As far as I'm concerned, there's no one forcing their hand to actually start the grants program, even though it passed, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I was wondering right. about that as well. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I think it's yeah. just... Well, it still makes sense to have it, right? Yeah. They're still, like, as a company saying, whoever has these tokens are the people who we trust to, to make decisions on the network. And whatever they decide, we're basically committing ourselves to doing. And if at some point they were like, well, the vote went one way, but we're going to do something different, that would, you know, destroy the trust of the community. I think that's true for any company, you know, whether you have a governance token or not. It's true for library. If library at some point said, we're doing something, like we're going to let the community vote and whatever they do is is a binding decision. And then the community voted and we were like, ah, we're not doing that. <laughs> right? That's weird. Who yeah. does that? Right. But you know what? The, the the only place where it becomes a little bit difficult is, I mean, as we know, these tokens are worth some sort of value. So you're only giving the people that have that, that hold that value, you know, precedence. And people who have more tokens have more of a say. And it just so happens that I remember when this uni, when uni the token itself was first distributed, uh, big exchanges like uh, I think it was I think CZ from Binance and I think someone else from another exchange like were picking up a huge amount of Uniswap tokens. <laughs> so it's like okay, so we have these centralized exchanges right. holding most of the stake for a decentralized protocol that poses a threat to them. <laughs> it's like a conflict of interest there. Yeah. You know? um, I know. Yeah. I, so I didn't know the story, but it totally makes sense. And uh, I'm looking forward to decentralized exchanges, right? Like that's ultimately where some of this stuff is going. Right. No, And you, and you know what, too? I think yeah. um, just kind of off, like not, not to get off on too, too much of a tangent for Uniswap, uh, you know, like the like decentralized exchange where, for example, uh, coins from any protocol can live on to me is, is really what's going to end up doing really, really well in the future. Uh, for, so, for example, right, I mean, like Komodo has something called the Atomic Dex, so, you know, another blockchain. Um, but what I like about theirs compared to Uniswap is that, you know, they have different tokens on it from different chains, of course, right? So in theory, you could swap, let's say, library for Bitcoin or, you know, Ethereum for, you know, library as well. Um, the only thing is that they have to add the coin itself, and it's a lot more complex than something built on chain like Uniswap. Um, but that's what I'm hoping uh, starts to take place in the future, because right now, and the issue with Uniswap is that it's built on Ethereum. Ethereum is too expensive to use, and you can only trade Ethereum-based tokens on it. You know, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what does uh, what does synthetics do? Synthetics. Oh yeah. So so, so synthetics is a. Uh, let me go. In. I, I actually have it pulled up right here, right? So as you can see here, it's a derivatives liquidity protocol, right? But in a nutshell, you're actually able to trade, uh, you know, like real world assets, like you know, whether it be gold or. I think I think I said silver was, was was one of the other things that I mentioned. Bitcoin, Ethereum, all on like their essential platform. So if we take a look, there should be a tr here we go trading right here. Oh no, this is these stats the stats section of it. Uh, let's see, staking. Here we go. Oh no, learn more. There we go. Yeah, because see, synthetics is another one where like it's similar to what I was mentioning before, which is uh, Mirror, uh, but it just should built on a different platform. Let me see if I can actually get to the actual website. You can try gold on it. How does that work? It just tracks the price of the asset, you know. Uh, so like, and I think it's the one ounce of gold specifically that that, that it'll track the price of, right? Um, and, Gosh, and so it, they have like an oracle that publishes a price. Yeah, I think they use Chainlink specifically, uh, synthetics. And then you have, okay. I think it was Mirror uses uh, Band Protocol as well. So it's it's all like different types of uh, <laughs> it's all like different types of uh, blockchains coming together to make this like this was one like, actually good product right because they could they could technically use like you know centralized oracles but then that would defeat the purpose at the end of the day right um well what is what is chain what does Chainlink do so Chainlink is also well chain chain is going to be that decentralized oracle right so i mean let me see i think can i actually bring up the chain website as well here we go it's pretty much like, because it's funny, I, I remember uh, I, I was trying to use Chainlink for like a little project that I had because uh, I, I wanted to connect the price of, what was it? Well, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to connect like a, like, a, like, a, like a regular API, something called Played that Coinbase uses that they connect uh, banks mm -hmm. to crypto more or less. Uh, but I, I think Chain, Chainlink, I mean, again, it's just, it's very expensive to use because it's, based, it's based, mainly based off Ethereum, so I couldn't do it. But 
essentially, it's taking like prices from, let's say in this case, we have uh, Binance, uh, Bittrex, Coinbase, all these different exchanges, for example, that have a price of Bitcoin or whatever. Uh, it's taking them all, um, aggregating them, and like just finding the average, and then using that as the actual price uh, of the coin on whatever protocol, say in this case, synthetics, right? Because, I mean, and the main thing is because, let's say, let's say I'm using the price just from Coinbase, a regular Oracle. A regular Oracle would just take one price from one location. Uh, and for whatever reason, like that price, I mean, that, the price of the token there is compromised, and all of a sudden Bitcoin's like $400,000. That actually happened mm-hmm. on LiveCoin, like literally like a, a couple weeks ago. Bitcoin was worth over like 400 k <laughs> um, wow. Then the issue then is that people who are using uh, your, like, you know, your product, it's being... They're essentially being probably overcharged by who knows how who knows like how much because Bitcoin is worth so much. Right, right, right. You know, uh, so it's it's a chain link things like chain link things like synthetics like it's stuff that you don't think that you really need until you actually need it. I think I've said that so many times in my videos, uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, especially chain link, uh, chain link band protocol, uh, synthetics more so like for people, for example, who don't want to go ahead and let's say you know go to a brokerage and have them buy gold for them or you know, give, give their information up to have to have someone buy silver or whatever it is for them, you know. Uh, it, it's just a decentralized way of uh, doing the, that kind of business where it's buying gold, buying silver, uh, dollars, you know, uh, fiat currencies as well. Anything like that. So Synthetics has a protocol that like, so is there a pile of silver somewhere that Synthetics owns that they've tokenized? So as far as I'm concerned, no. They just they just essentially just track the price of it and you're, you're able to trade, trade a derivative of it, you know, on chain. Gotcha. So, so I'm betting on the price of silver. I'm not actually buying silver. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. You don't. You don't. You don't technically own silver with that. Yeah. 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 I mean, because you know, gotcha. like, like you know, like with uh, you familiar with Tether, US, US, uh, USDT. Yeah. Like, well, they're supposed right. to have like, like a dollar back to every USDT they have. I mean, chances are they probably don't. <laughs> right. But you know, it's going to be a little bit different than how synthetics and these other uh, protocols operate. But yeah, they don't have any of that stuff physically on hand. Gotcha. So Synthetics publishes the price and, and Chainlink publishes the price. They publish it to Ethereum. There's like a contract. You can be like, give me the price right now. Yeah, they have like an API, like uh, as we can see over here. Uh, so like, you know, this is like Solidity and be able to pretty much use like their, their Chainlink API and just plug it into uh, any smart contract you want to use. And that's where Synthetics gets their, uh, you know, prices from. That's where they just pull it from, right? Gotcha. All right. So question, I'm, I'm probably going to ask this about everything, but how did Chainlink and Synthetics make money? Oh, oh yeah. Well, so Chainlink makes money off every time you you request, uh, you, like you request Price. data from it, right? Yeah. So, and, okay. and that's actually the reason why I didn't use it <laughs> because you have to be in Chainlink, <laughs> which makes sense. They're providing a service, but yeah, yeah. Every, every time you request data, yeah, they, they, they charge you. Uh, I think it was they charge you. They should be charging you in Link, as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, there would be no point in Link. But yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. So you have to you have to buy Link and then you spend Link to use their API. Yep, and I think that's what a lot of these services are. You know, similar to like Anchor, Chainlink, uh, Band Protocol. They're all similar. I mean, they have, they have a token for a reason. You know, hopefully at least. Gotcha. Is there a reason to hold uh, Chainlink, like Link token? I mean, other than like speculating on the value of it, I I can't really see a reason to hold on to hold it. Um, there might be there might be like a staking thing that, that you can do with it, but as far as I'm concerned. Since it is technically built on Ethereum, no, there isn't. Other than speculation, of course, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So then you have Uniswap, synthetic. What does Curve do? Yeah, Curve. So Cur- Curve actually threw me a cur- for a, for a curve this morning as well. So, <laughs> was, was, so I, I was doing a little more research on Curve uh, both yesterday and today, just because I haven't like actually used it myself. But it's pretty much just a way for you to like like swap. Uh, stable coins in a nutshell right so as you can see like you have DAI, mm-hmm. usdc usdt BUSD, all different types of stable coins um in a much more efficient way than like you would like let's say in uniswap where you're going to be charged a lot of fees uh, and it's a lot more frictionless is what they say on curve as well so it should it should cost a lot less um and that's just because of how they i guess you know form their smart contracts how they build it you know uh, but not only that i love the ui Oh my yeah no see that that's the one thing about Curve. <laughs> like I remember when I first saw Curve when it first came out, I'm like, what the hell is this? And I I just I just closed out of it. 
<laughs> but that's why it looks so weird. But in all reality, this is this is similar to like a lot of these different, uh, you know, like like a liquidity farming pro- or yield farming protocols, where these are all just different pools, and you're just providing whether it be Dai USDC, uh, you know, Ren BTC, WBTC. You're just providing it in the pool, um, and people are you know swapping it out if if, if they want. Uh, but the main thing here is that you know, like you're able to take these stable coins where you know. People, you know, if you have a stable coin, you're essentially saying, "All right, I want to, I want a more conservative approach to, uh, to investing in this in this case. Like, I don't want to expose myself to the high to the high uh, price fluctuations of Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever. Uh, but you're also getting a good yield on it. I mean, this is, for example, this pool over here. You know, assuming you're holding all stable coins, you're getting 19% uh, yearly returns, which is about 17% more than an average bank. <laughs> you know, right? Uh, but obviously, you're still exposing yourself to the uh, to these assets itself. So Tether in this case. I think that's why this pool is so much because Tether's here and <laughs> not that many people trust Tether. <laughs> and that's why the APY is so is so high. So, you know, there's there's different risks that you take when you're when you're using this compared to these like using like a centralized uh, you know uh, I don't know, alternative, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. And it's I guess one of the things I don't get is why there are so many different wrapped versions of BTC. Right, like there's like five, six, seven. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot. I mean, WBTC. I guess it's, yeah. yeah. There's W. There's Ren. There's uh, you know. I mean, are they? I mean, it's. I guess it's nice to have it be not just one, right? Like if one of them broke for some reason, you'd have the others, and they still work. Uh, is that it, or is it like everybody just wants to make their own? So you know, it's funny. I was actually kind of like wrapping my head around that too, like the other day. And from what, from my understanding, what I would think it is, it's mainly because, all right, well, REN BTC, WBTC, SBTC, these are all different, like, pegs of Bitcoin on different protocols. So, and these are all mm-hmm. more, more or less decentralized finance. So it's just another way for you to interact with Bitcoin um, on Ethereum, you know? Now, obviously, these are right. all these are all on Ethereum. So it's like, yeah, why, why wouldn't there just be one, let's say, EBTC or some shit that can be used with all these different protocols? But at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, it just adds value to the protocol itself. So for like Ren, you know, like why wouldn't they want to have their own version of Bitcoin uh, at the end of the day, which will just increase, you know, the amount of people and liquidity in their protocol itself, you know? That's what I would think it is. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It's curious that uh, they they have sometimes pretty different prices, which like you would think they'd be arbitraged away. And, and maybe they are. Maybe it's like the fees are slow or maybe there's fees in there that we're not seeing, but... Sometimes they're like, you know, 46 grand, 47 grand. Like, that's a pretty big difference. Yeah. Well, no, that's the thing. <laughs> and I guess that's funny. I think that's, that's, that's what these, uh, that's what actually YFI, as far as I'm concerned, is actually uh, kind of built for, is to uh, ha- have there be a way for you to actually, like, take advantage of those arbitrage, like those moments where there's a good amount of arbitrage, without having to spend a whole bunch of ETH. Because that's why, to me, mm. at least right now, I'm sure that that's why there's such a big discrepancy between them. Is because it's so expensive to do it that it's like it's not even worth like getting into the contract in the first place. You know, the return won't be worth it. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, it's interesting that they're competing on who can write the most efficient contract. It's it's like uh, it's like getting paid for writing really good code. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah, and I think um, and I think that's what uh, it's funny. Uh, uh, that's what Wi-Fi, as far as I'm concerned, like prides itself in. Because like, <laughs> like you know, at first when I first heard of Wi-Fi, I you know I, I mainly just thought it was all hype since people like this shit was like oh, what like forty forty thousand dollars a coin. Um, not to mention that there's very low low supply. Uh, but it, it it's really just that they have very efficient code. You know, compared to just putting your crypto or whatever into whatever whatever smart contract and letting it sit there and gain yield. Because uh, I mean, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but you know, like different protocols have. Uh, different obviously percentages of return that you can get on them, right? So what these guys do is they right. they instead of you like chasing that uh, that opportunity, let's say you get into one today where it's fifteen percent, but then it goes to five percent tomorrow, but another one has like one at twenty percent. Instead of you getting in and out of different contracts wasting ETH, they have these vaults or you know different types of lending uh, that chase that for you, so you don't have to worry about paying all the fees, you know, uh, which is really cool. Yeah. And they do it by rebalancing all the time. Yeah, see, or what do they do? Like, how does that work? As far as I'm concerned, like, see, like that—that that I'm not too sure. But I did a little bit 
I did a little bit of like a, what do you call it? Of um, of a coding on Solidity like for a very small amount of time. You know, like I think it was like a couple months ago. Um, and there are like different types of, uh, I guess you could say it's functions. Different types of functions that have like different levels of uh, publicity or privacy. I guess actually. So some of them you can access uh, like externally, like like we do with some of these smart contracts. Some of them are only able to be accessed internally through other smart contracts. I would think that they probably take advantage of those, you know. Uh, so instead of having to spend a you know, shitload of, uh, you know, uh, ETH fees every time you do that, I'm sure they probably just take advantage of, like, the internal functions that exist within those different protocols. So Wi-Fi will interact with Curve, um, and Curve might interact with another different protocol that has uh, DAI or another stable coin on it. They all kind of mix them together, you know. I think that's the cool part about, you know, uh, DeFi. Yeah. It's also like, it reminds me of, you know, like people, when Bitcoin ASICs came out, they were like trying to write the, you know, the most efficient ASICs. Cause if you get a 5% increase, it's like a ton of money you could be making. So now it's like, uh, you know, you're trying to write the most efficient contracts and that's, that's the new ASICs, ASIC creators. Yeah. You know, it's too, it's funny you say that because I think that's like, I think most people don't really realize that, you know, I mean, a lot of crypto Twitter, maybe cause I'm on crypto Twitter all the time, but a lot of crypto Twitter and whatnot, <laughs> even crypto YouTube, they mainly just focus on the best, uh, you know, like opportunities for like people like us essentially to get in uh, and trade or provide liquidity. Whereas I, I would think of people who may be at the end of the day probably making the most are the developers who are making really, really efficient code because we're, we're the ones using their contracts, right? That's really cool. Yeah, and it like, sounds like YFI is that's what they're competing on, right? So how do they, how do they get paid? It's my favorite question. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> well, they have their own governance token as well. You know, so I would I would assume as well that it's, it's the same scenario, right? Where literally, you know, right. all that's happening is that you know, they have some sort of trading fees that go into play. Very, very small amount, I'm sure. So small that people probably don't care, don't care enough. Uh, but, you know, that they're most likely getting a, kick, a kickback off that. Um, I would think. I mean, it, it isn't it is entirely possible that perhaps that they, they're not even getting paid with anything. And maybe they already have uh, a specific amount of Wi-Fi saved up, you know locked for the uh, for the team but you know mm -hmm. i would say it's one of those two things otherwise what could it be yeah i don't know i mean there's uh it's, that's the nice thing about these tokens right it's like new business models and people come up with like i'm gonna get paid for you know this way or that way or uh i, I mean it could be like yeah it could be they pre-mined it it could be they uh they issue for themselves it could be like I know some protocols have two tokens where it's like the the governance one gets a percentage of the fees from the pot from the main one. So like you could you could even be getting paid for um, just owning the governance token as a oh, percentage yeah. of yeah. If like like staking cool. the governance token. <laughs> oh, okay. Pretty much. Well, so so what are they? So and then you can also just take all the tokens and put the tokens in the pools and get paid for that as well. Exactly. It's it's not it's like I think that's why they call it yield farming because you can get so you can get yeah. so many different types of yield, <laughs> so many different types of ways. <laughs> right. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Are people concerned? Like somewhere, one little thing will crack, and the whole thing is like, oh, everybody depends on everyone else, and uh, and it all breaks. Or is it like pretty separate? You know, like if uh, if 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 there is something that breaks in one part of the system, it's like that's oh, fine. We'll just go around and use these other protocols. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think people are. I don't think people are too concerned with that. I think people are really just focusing on like, just how expensive it is to use. Because you, you mean you lose, you lose quite a quite a bit of money just interacting with these things. Um, yeah. But like to a certain extent, like I mean that 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 is a thing that exists, right? Uh, rug pulls. You familiar with the with, 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 with what a rug pull is? Yeah. Oh my god. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't. I, <laughs> I love a drama. Give it to me. Rug pulls. So I, I don't know like the like the technicalities and whatnot behind it, but I do know that essentially. Uh, what's been happening? It's I mean it hasn't been happening too often, but it does happen quite occasionally where like you'll have these uh, things not like Wi-Fi, but like smaller pro smaller protocols where they have liquidity pools that you can put money into. People are buying it and trading it and whatnot. Uh, where there's like some sort of some sort of an exploit within the bug within the contract itself, like it's a bug, and you know, unlike traditional finance where it's like for example, me and you are trading, I'm giving you something and you're giving it back to me. There's no mediary. The liquidity pool is technically like the middleman. Technically, the liquidity pool is the middleman. Uh, so that bug can cause someone to be able to pull all the liquidity out of it. So all of a sudden, 
I have, let's say, for example, I'm, I'm putting up $10,000 with liquidity, 5000 in a coin and 5000 in a stable coin. Some dude says, oh, you know what? I found a bug. Let me just go ahead and, you know, take all the, pretty much rug pull it. Just take all the liquidity out and keep it for myself. And that's happened mm-hmm. a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's, that's one of the risks. So technically, like audited code is usually the best way to go in this case, right? Because you want to make sure that you know, there are no bugs, hopefully. But even if something is audited, you never know. Right, they could have missed something. Right, like, right. like I think it's called, like they call that like a logic bug or something from something, something similar to that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I I see these as like all the protocols have built-in bug bounties, right? Like, that is true. there's a bug to take all the coins. It's kind of <laughs> nice. It it puts security like up front. See, I would agree. The thing is that you have. I mean, listen. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, I do have some, some, some money, obviously, in liquidity pools. And if I lost it, I'd be very sad. But at the end of the day, that's one of the risks you have to take when you partake in decentralized finance, right? Is that there, there could potentially be some sort of flaw or some sort of bug, and just like that, like you lost everything. You know, um, I think that actually happened with one of Wi-Fi's most recent um, vaults that they put up, and I, I think they ended up actually giving people back like some coins through like a, like a grant or something. But yeah. For the most part, you're usually screwed when that happens. Yeah, it's one of the risks. Yeah, it makes sense. There's a there's a good um, book by Morgan Housel. Do you read Morgan Housel? I do not. I he's a know. he's he writes a lot about money, but he wrote a book called The Psychology of Money, and it's very much like, oh wow, yeah, you should just treat this stuff as like it's gonna be gone, and uh, and if it's not gone, great, you you win big, and if it is gone, like you can't, don't take that kind of risk, you know. Yeah, no, no, exactly. And, and and that's why I think it's, I mean, you know, like as, uh, as people who make, you know, a, a content on your know, library, YouTube, whatever it is, you know, like I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I find myself like almost like annoying myself when I re- keep on repeating that, like you have to like almost like, act as if like, like you don't mind if this money goes away tomorrow because it, it is, it is really true. And it can be really defeating for a lot of people like, you know, who just lose money like, out of nowhere, you know, um, especially if you yeah. yeah, those are the worst yeah well i mean hopefully with time this kind of stuff just matures right like when bitcoin first came out people were like oh this is you know what is this can i really trust this and now even today you know it's it's been a long time they've really taken care of it it's been up for 10 plus years running nonstop. but uh it's now you feel much more secure about it um do you feel 100 percent secure no i don't think you should feel 100 percent secure about pretty much anything uh, but right. you feel much more scared about it. So I see, you know, in a couple of years, these things are still around. They're doing well. They learn from their mistakes. Yeah, no. I mean, it's it's almost like, uh, you know, because it's like, it's like opportunity cost, right? At the end of the day, which which yeah. do you think is going to give you, like, the best, whether it be returns or just the best, like, peace in mind? Because to me, I, th- I honestly, I value my peace in mind more than anything else at this point. <laughs> after I'm sure, you know, after being right. crypto for so long. Like a lot of money can be made, but at the same time, you can lose so much sleep and get so stressed over this stuff. <laughs> oh god! But no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you see, cool. all right. So what else am I missing? I think for the most part, I mean, the, the only thing that we didn't kind of bring up was the. Uh, I guess you could say, well, I mean, synthetics is kind of similar, like stock trading on the blockchain. Um, so like th- that was like where I was bringing up the, like the other, the other day where, uh, you know, I, I kind of got into that thing called uh, mirror mirror protocol that's built on a different, uh, blockchain. Uh, so not, not to like, you know, start shilling another, another coin or whatever, but <laughs> cause I hate, I hate to make it sound like that, but, um, like I, I like what they're doing in terms of just, uh, bringing something new to, to the table. Cause I, I don't think synthetics does that where you're able to, as you can see here, trade, uh, different types of. Uh, you know, you could say derivative stocks on here. So Apple, Netflix, Twitter, Tesla, and they all do this relatively the same thing. They just track the price of the stock itself. Uh, so it's gotcha. So it's the same as like betting on silver, like you're just betting on stock prices. Pretty much. Um, but it's funny because this is kind of where I, I uh, this is where I've been really exposed to in terms of like uh, providing liquidity and all that. And I learned uh, what's called impermanent loss. Are you, are you familiar with what that is, impermanent loss? Oh yeah, so nope. <laughs> so it's one of the risks of providing liquidity, um, and all right. So let's take an example where we have we're just holding. Let's say in this case uh, the mirror token, right? I'm holding it assume, and hoping that the price goes up. Let's say two, three hundred percent, whatever. Um, you can do that, or you can go ahead and provide liquidity and get uh, you know get trading fees from people who are using the protocol. So you know if you're betting on the, to- the coin to go up a lot, 
you probably just want to hold the coin. Uh, if you're betting on a lot of people using the protocol itself in the future, then you're probably going to want to provide liquidity because you'll end up getting... Can you explain that? Because I thought when you provide liquidity, you, you still own the asset. You do, but you don't own as much. So let's say I have a thousand bucks. You can either own a thousand dollars of the coin or you can own five hundred dollars of the coin and five hundred dollars of the pair. Right, because you gotta put in both. You gotta buy both. Gotcha. But it's not only that. See, that's what I thought. I'm like, okay, this is cool. So, you know, obviously I'm not exposing to my I'm exposing myself as much to the asset. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, all right, even if it goes up three hundred percent, I'll still make a good amount of money and I'll still have a little bit less risk. Uh, but what impermanent loss is, is essentially, you know, obviously your coins are there for a reason. It's because people want to be able to trade with them back and forth. So if the coin is keeps going up in value. Uh, what that means is more and more people are buying up that governance token, in this case, mirror, and are giving you, you know, that stable coin in return. So as the price goes up, you know, my holdings are going up too, but all of a sudden I don't have 500 worth of that coin anymore. Like, sorry, I don't, I don't have 500 of that mirror coin anymore, you know? Like, now I have a lot less of the actual mirror coin itself, even though it's worth more. You know, it's like diminishing returns. You know, so mm -hmm. maybe, I, maybe I would have started out with 100 mirror, mirror tokens in this case, right? But, you know, and the price, let's say, would have been 500 bucks. Uh, but as time goes on, my supply of mirror, mirror tokens are depleting because people are buying them. <laughs> so although I'm technically getting more money because I'm getting the USD from people trading it in, I'm getting less mirror coins in the long run, you know? So... In this case, I think but they should be the same, right? Or I guess the total value should be the same, right? That's the thing. The value is the same, right? But right. the amount of the tokens isn't. <laughs> so, right. Gotcha. So like, okay. So, so you're not getting quite the exposure that you would have gotten if you just had the token. Right. Which is good and bad, right? If the coin goes down, then you don't lose as much. But, you know, as with crypto, I mean, at this point, everything is, it seems like everything is going up. Everything is green. <laughs> so it's like, you know, right. in, this, in this case, the coin did about 3x from when I bought it. I'm like, oh, this is great. But I'm looking at how much, how much, you know, like how much I have. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm like losing more and more every day because <laughs> the price is going right. up. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an opportunity cost at the end of the day is what it is, you know. <laughs> gotcha. Well, but you could. So if you were like, all right, you know, I'm tired of watching this. I'm out. You could cash out and just take all your tether and buy the mirror coin or take all your mirror and buy that whatever the asset is. And you're right. still back where you would have been if you just had the asset. Not technically, because it didn't appreciate as much as it would have if you just had it, you know, like. So, like, not, yeah, no, yeah, because, OK, so let's say. I want to use like 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 whole numbers here. So like, yeah, let's say a thousand bucks, right? We were holding it in the first place. It did 300 percent. And now we're at. Three thousand dollars, like let's just say, if I provided liquidity for that, right. um, and it did three x, you know, from there, theoretically, if I had the same amount of each token, then it also would have three x. But because as the price of the token went up, people are buying it. I'm technically selling the coin every time someone buys it from the liquidity pool. You know, that that's technically right. what you're doing. So I'm not selling it at when it's when it's you know three x. I'm I'm selling it all. The right, time. right, right. Okay. That's what I didn't gotcha. understand. You know what I mean? I'm like, like, what's going gotcha. on? <laughs> so, you right. Know. All right. So if it goes up faster than like the fees you're getting, exactly. then yeah, you're losing out. Uh, gotcha. But if it doesn't go anywhere, you're still getting fees. Well, I guess if it doesn't. But if it's if it's doesn't go anywhere, but there's volume, then you're getting fees. People are trading back and forth. Like, gotcha. It's funny, that, you know, and I'm still providing liquidity for it. It's funny, like I, I'm almost happy to see it just stay where it's at. <laughs> I don't want to see it go up anymore <laughs> or go down. <laughs> right. You know. Um. But the the other thing gotcha. too, I guess I forgot to mention is that you know, yeah, it's similar to how Uniswap and well, not Uniswap, but uh, Wi-Fi and Curve work. Uh, when you provide liquidity, you get liquidity pool tokens in return. You know, to it's like a placeholder to get your get your coins back. Uh, you can right. stake those right. and get a return on that. So right now, right. at least when I first joined, the return on that for Mirror was about three hundred percent, you know, yearly, which is nuts. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Uh, but as time goes on, you know, it goes lower and lower. So that's mainly why I did it. Um, and I, I still think it's worth it. I think right now it's at about one hundred and seventy percent, something like that. So, yeah, you know, gotcha. And so for Mirror, like they run an Oracle, they, they run like a stock price Oracle or how does that work? They use band protocol for, for some of these. Yeah. I think for the most of them, they actually do. Okay. So band is like, they just run a bunch of Oracles. Yeah. So it band is similar to Chainlink, right? 
were they able to just take uh, you know prices from different different areas, different uh, websites or whatever, different providers, uh, and they're just able to aggregate them together and just use the average. Gotcha. So you're really trusting them to do a good job. Pretty much. Well, I'm not. I'm not trading any of the stocks. So personally, I'm not. But I mean, you. I'm not. Yeah. The system. Right. Totally. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's funny, right? Because we, we, we say crypto is trustless, even though, it's, even though technically yeah. you're trusting a lot of different things to work. <laughs> that is very Yeah. Funny. No, I don't, I don't believe in like everything is trustless kind of, you know, there's a real world, uh, yeah. maybe at some point in the future. Right. But, but even that, no, I don't see, I don't see everything being a hundred percent trustless. There's people, there's like things that are not on chain. Right. Yeah. So no. And, and even then you still have to trust that the code is legitimate and that there is no bugs in it. So, yeah, but even if that were true, even if the code was 100% right, it still wouldn't be right. trustless, right? No, yeah, that is, that is very um, true. Maybe if we were all robots, like, plugged into the blockchain, then maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, great. Well, yeah. So then, uh, yeah, go for it, go for it, yeah. Yeah, no, I got nothing. I was, uh, I'm happy. I, I feel like I learned a lot. Well, there you go. No, I mean, I, I think this stuff is really cool. And it's a shame that we can't write we can't really like uh, learn through experiment experimenting with it as much because how much it costs. I I, sh I sh shit you not. Uh, Don't they run test nets? Oh my god, yeah, but the test nets are like on Ethereum. They're they're horrible. They're they're all clogged. It takes forever to get Ethereum on it. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it takes way too way too long, way too long. So you know. Why? What's so nobody's mining it? Like, what's bad about it? Right. No. Um. It's it's, it's not that no one's mining it. It's that uh, it, it, it's mainly just the fact that. You know, it's they're very clogged because everyone's using it, and uh -huh. just the thing that I forgot what it was because I remember I was I was using it the other day to it was the same time when I was learning Solidity because I needed to, you know, I think it was I made my own ERC twenty token and I wanted to test it out with different contracts. It just takes too long to use, and it's it's almost the same as Ethereum to be honest with you, because just too many people are using it. Right. You know, I um, mean, because even though mm -hmm. it's a test net, you still need to get like that test net Ethereum, which sometimes takes days right. to get. So, really, it's crazy. Yeah, no, no, it's ridiculous. I guess so many people are using it. Wow. Well, all this stuff is open source. Like you, I mean, I know it's like it's probably really painful to do it all yourself, but you could set up everything yourself. Right? Yeah, like you could run your own. Yeah, but theory, your own chain link, your own everything. I mean, you have to like make up. Yeah, yeah, it would take you forever. But oh my god, and I remember, I think I, I I did that a I did that a while ago with Ethereum, and I think they all the, they didn't discontinue like the uh they they had like a a wallet called Geth. Or then they'll like they, they have like a no code Greg Geth. That thing was horrible. I tried. I ran. I ran it on my computer and it was working back then. But I think they discontinued it because you can't use it anymore. Now you can only do it through the command line. And I hate the command line. I'm not a coder by any. Oh way. really? I hate the com <laughs> I, I don't code, so I hate the command line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, are, are you no, I. I are you familiar with the command line? Is that what you used to, to code? <laughs> oh yeah, but I I grew up on that. Like I've been doing that since high school, so oh, wow. it's very natural. Yeah, I've been running. Uh, I've been running Linux forever, so. Oh, really? See, see that, I, I couldn't do it, dude. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't blame you. It's all. It's you know, like objectively, kind of speaking, it's really bad if you don't. It, there's a big hurdle, but once you clear the hurdle, you're like, oh, it's magic. You know, it can do all these really cool things. Um, right. But if you clearing the hurdle is a, it's a big hurdle. So. Yeah. No, you know, I I tried. I tried to do it. I had like a. Uh, it's funny. I, I actually got rid of it the other day. Uh, I had I had like a. Uh, I think it's like a, a was it a uh, no ThinkPad? It was a ThinkPad, a very old one, and I was running Linux on it because I wanted to uh, test out the Beacon Chain before it went live. Like I was on the Magala mm -hmm. testnet and the Onyx testnet, and it was it was pretty cool to use it for a little while. But it, yeah, it's like, like having to install something or having to change like a password or some shit. Like I had to look up everything. You had to like go into the command line and start changing stuff. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I can't yeah. do it. It's kind of like uh, it's like you have to memorize these incantations, and then you just type them in, and, and it happens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I hear you. It's it's not uh it's it's like a very you have you have to be into like the benefits that you get from it to really use it. I don't think it's it's something that most people should deal with. No, yeah. I mean, and I'm, I'm I, I I think I have a pretty open mind for certain things. So I mean. To me, like I think the benefits are worth it. Just, geez, like I don't know. I mean, I couldn't do it. I'll say that. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. But I like it a lot. But it's it's for this kind of stuff that you're like, 
Yeah. Um, like the, the benefit of the command line is you, you have like little pieces and you put them together and you can do, um, like you can manipulate the system, you can like manipulate files, you know, uh, and it, it's also, I think the reason developers really like it is it, it's kind of easier, you know, instead of having like a bunch of buttons and you press the buttons, you can be like, oh, well, just type some stuff, just type some stuff. And then you're changing the behavior. I guess that, that is, it's like very modular in a sense, right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's the the Linux philosophy is like, or the Unix philosophy. Sorry, uh, you have lots of things that do one thing very well, and you're like, I'm going to take this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing and, and uh, yeah. chain it all together. And actually, uh, I bet you know the same stuff kind of happens on Ethereum, right? You have Chainlink and Wi-Fi, and whatever, and you yeah, put them yeah. together, and you make the magic happen. Actually, yeah, that is true. Yeah, in a nutshell. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So then, so then if I were to ask you, if you want, would, would you want to kind of? Yeah. Like can I move on to like uh, library a little bit? I mean, I'm, I'm really interested just to see like, you know, how your experience has been with library. I mean, in terms of code. Sure, yeah, I don't want to, like, I've been asking yeah. you all the questions. I don't want to like <laughs> be the one taking. No, no, of course, of course. So, so you said you started, well, it really went live in 2016, right? You mentioned. I think it was June, 2016. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty, I think it's something like that. Right. And it's, like I said, I mean, I, when I was when I was checking, I think it was Core Market Cap. I noticed that the price went all the way back to 2016. I'm like, like holy shit! Like, because I'd only started hearing about it uh, early 2020, you know. Uh, so, like, I mean, like, how how was the like how was like the code behind it changed? Would you say between 2016 and now? I'm sure it's changed a lot, but you know, like, uh, was it just you working on uh, it, or other people as well? I know it was, you know. Back no, then. no. There's we have a we have a bunch of people. We have uh, I think maybe ten. 11 people now and it's it's fluctuated we had more we had less um we also have a, a big community of people working on it so it's not just like i'm sitting down writing code right we have um there's people doing projects on top of library there is uh i, I found a few days ago there's a guy who made an rss feed um wow. for library channels it's uh because you know it's the blockchain it's all public so anybody can do that you can just follow channels if you want an rss feed i was like huh i really want this for myself i looked it up somebody already made it <laughs> that's cool <laughs> so then yeah and uh i mean no, go for it please please go. yeah it's uh it's changed uh it's changed a bit um it's uh, the underlying there's there's like many levels right there's like the blockchain there's the um peer-to-peer -peer protocol there's the apps built on top of it um so they've all kind of shifted together i think the the blockchain is probably the one that's changed the least and then the, you know the ones on the top have changed the most because they're they're the easiest to change um, yeah. Interesting. Cause yeah. Because I, I mean, I, I think. Um, so yeah, I mean, like obviously the blockchain part of it, obviously to me, is, is what, what makes it so cool. The fact that you can, like, literally have these decentralized video protocol. Because as far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen any project that does pretty much what library does, like you know, putting actual videos and like even files actually at this point on the blockchain uh, in an efficient way, of course. Because uh, I mean, all the, I think all the other streaming alternatives, uh, like D Live, what. Um, anyway, I don't even. I almost forgot all of them at this point because I don't use any of them. <laughs> They're all like faux freedom of speech. They're all faux uh, uh, decentralization. Whereas this is like actually all right. Like even if library.tv gets taken down tomorrow, like the website, you can still use library as a protocol. Odyssey still works. You know what I mean? Like uh, to me, that's what makes it so cool that it actually like truly embodies what cryptocurrency should be in a video form. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm excited about. Right? It's. it's uh... I like uh, I like the technology a lot. You know, I like creating a thing that will keep working, even if at some point, you know, maybe I'll stop working on it. Maybe everybody who works for library will stop working on it. Yeah. It's still gonna be around. That's amazing. And so, w one other question I have then in that case is, like you said, like the blockchain part has been done for quite some time. Uh, so, have you s seen any complications with building on top of that, like like the application level, like the UI, all that stuff? Because you know you technically competing with what you know a, a youtube that has a monopoly over this show, over this stuff and i'm sure it's not as easy as you've seen to implement for example live streaming onto onto the blockchain like how hard has that mm -hmm. stuff been would you say well i wouldn't say the blockchain stuff is done you know it's it's changed the least but we have big ideas for how to keep changing it okay so it's going to keep changing it's uh i would say that the blockchain piece is the piece that's the slowest to change um for uh, for some of the reasons we talked about, right? You have to be very careful. Um, if you have bugs in your code, that's the piece. You, you know, if that breaks, it's it's bad for everything. So you got to be careful with that. You have to 
our code is um, very similar to Bitcoin's code. Like the code, we, it just basically comes from Bitcoin plus it has our piece on it. So it's uh, it's a, an older language. It's a little bit hard to, to you know, it's, it's uh, C++ is all right, but it's not as easy to work with it or as quick to work with it as some of these other tools. Um, you have to test. You have uh, kind of years of history. I was yeah. talking to our developer. Uh, I was talking to Jack yesterday, I think, or maybe today, about how every time you work on the blockchain and every time you're syncing the blockchain, it's like time travel. You know, you're like, oh, this thing we did four years ago. I can't believe we did it like that. It's still with us. It's going to be with us forever. Really wish we did it differently. <laughs> and, uh, and you got to deal with those. Uh, it's also nice. You get to see how much you've learned since four or five years ago. Um, so yeah, that, that piece moves slower, but it's, it's moving. Yeah, no, no. And that's the thing. And it's, it's funny because, you know, I, I'd almost find it, I mean, obviously you can let me know, like frustrating or in a society that everything mm -hmm. is going quicker and quicker and people are used to things coming, they, all things happening quicker and quicker. Like we have Amazon shipping packages in like a day. <laughs> we have, you know, yeah. uh, you know, all, all things happening just a lot quicker than things used to happen. Um, I'm sure you get a lot of people frustrated that it's like, oh, why, why haven't we seen this feature yet? Why isn't, why isn't this out yet? <laughs> I see that all the time yeah. <laughs> about different things. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they're right, right? They they want they want the thing that they want, and it's our job to. I wouldn't say it's our job to give the people what they want, but it's more like to give the people the thing that they really will enjoy. You know, it's. Right. Um, Amazon is is like magic as far as I'm concerned. I go online, I press a button, a box shows up at my house. I don't know where it came from. I don't know who made it. Um, that's both good and and has downsides as well. Yeah. So, I mean. It's funny. I, I almost, uh, I'll be honest, I almost see it as like an issue, though, to a certain extent, because it's conditioning people to get used to instantaneous things. And not to, not to mention, you know, now, like, they're essentially setting the bar, you know, for, for a delivery and whatever it is. But in this case, you know, like for, you know, uh, streaming and one art or, you know, uh, content streaming, you know, YouTube is the bar right now, technically, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to, to make something better than that with a lot of those resources, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because, geez, I mean, how, how much is Google worth? <laughs> you know? Right. But, yeah. But wait, what's bad about that? Tell me about that. To me, what's bad about it is that, you know, you're giving people, I would say, almost unrealistic expectations. So, for example, let's say, you know, the way Amazon works, and people are, so people are used to getting packages very easily, like you said, at a click of a button, and getting it, like, day of, next day, right? Uh, so, to me, you know... That that not only applies there, but I think people start to start to want that in their everyday life, whether it's going out and ordering food and wanting it right away, whether it's buying anything else online and expecting it right away. Um, at least that's what I feel like it is, you know. And this and not to mention, I mean, you know, you know, like I like making videos all the time, and you'll see just people <laughs> in the comments like, "Hey, make a video about this, make a video about this," and it's it's just crazy, like like how much. Uh, I guess it's entitlement. I guess is, I guess is really what I what I'm really kind of looking at in that case, but. It, I think, like, uh, to your point, um, it does help uh, innovation, though, right? You have to work harder uh, than than that. I guess you have to go higher than the end than the than the previous bar, uh, and you'll potentially get you know some sort of reward out of it, which is monetary and all that all that stuff. But I just yeah, yeah I don't know. It, it's I just like the unrealistic. Well, no, there's there. something there, you know. Yeah. If, if, if something feels um, wrong or whatever, then th there's something there, you know. I don't think we should just ignore that. Uh, but it is interesting to think about it. Like what's, how would you like to see it work? You know, you think you want delivery to be slower or you want like people to be, um, I mean, it sounds like you want people to be more grateful. I think like, you know, people should be excited. Stuff is so fast. Like that's awesome. Right. It's not like I want my next video. I want my next video. That's what you're saying. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. No, yes. This is nothing. This, this is in no way saying that the commenters, the people watching are bad people. I love all, I love all you guys. <laughs> But uh, it's just like it's like the one percent of people that do that. It's just this that yeah. side of stuff. But then there's also sorry about that. Uh, but then there's also the uh, in terms of like uh, what do you call it? I'm like the you know like the things coming very quickly and people not getting and uh, being desensitized to how like how this stuff really works in the back end. It almost like it's like how do you compete with that? You know what I'm saying? Like for like you know. The Amazon was doing what they're doing. It's just, you know, for most people, it's it's very helpful, like you said. I mean, like, my, I mean, my parents have been using Amazon for quite some time, and they, 
you know, instead of going to the supermarket, we don't even go anymore. They just use like the Whole Foods thing on Amazon and it gets delivered like they have, like, well, next day, next day. Uh, but like, where's the competition in that? You know, what's the mom and pop store going to do essentially uh, if I don't want to leave the house anymore because I'm so used to buying food <laughs> online at a click of a button. I don't even need to leave, leave my house, you know? Uh, yeah, I think that's what's tough about Amazon. Yeah. It's really great for people shopping at Amazon. It's not so great people trying to sell through Amazon. That's the thing. They're the ones who can screw. And then, you know, and it's almost like a, I feel like I keep using this word, but I don't know exactly what it means. Hopefully I'm using it correctly. It's like a vicious cycle. So it's like, all right, it's bad for the other businesses. So, but it's so bad, you know, to the fact where no one's going to be shopping there anymore. They go out of business and all of a sudden you only have one provider for the goods that you want to get. And the issue is that they can now set the rules for whatever it is they're selling. So now you have to abide by their rules rather than them, you know, <laughs> uh, custom, well, like, you know, rather than them kind of adjusting their platform to what you like, they're adjusting their platform to what they feel is better for you, which can be good or bad, you know, but it's it essentially puts the power in their hands, right. you know, hopefully that kind right. of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ideally, uh, we have an environment that fosters competition. Ideally, you can compete with those things, and it's hard um, sometimes. So I don't have, I don't have like an answer. Like, oh, we just change these three things. No, and, I don't uh, expect you to. Amazon's great, <laughs> and it's really easy to compete with them. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you do it little by little. You look for the things that they can't compete on, right? Like you, you compete on those things. You look for the things that they're missing. Everybody's got blind spots, and. Uh, Sometimes you're right about those. Sometimes you're not. Um, but if you are, you take advantage. No, yeah. Right, like Amazon. I mean, we, don't, we don't really compete with Amazon, but to take the example of YouTube, like YouTube does not have, like, they don't have a blockchain. They can't, this kind of thing just wasn't possible in the past. Maybe they could today. They probably could. Um, I don't know if they want to. They're doing pretty well for themselves. You know, they like their business. Right. And, uh, but uh, I think... Yeah, I, I think uh, it's about having a different vision of the future. Right. No, yeah. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to completely align with what everyone thinks, uh, you know, should be like, like the future of whatever it is that you're doing, right? And I, I honestly, that's why I think libraries is, is so cool because, um, like, although, like, for example, like, like well, the one thing I've been waiting for for a minute was that the iOS app, you know, Odyssey in this case, I'm like, yeah. you know, like, oh, that they released this and so many more people would be exposed to it, so many, so many, so many more people could use it. But then you have to remind yourself, okay, obviously the guys are testing it out. There's a reason why it's not out yet. If, if you know, if it would be, then they, they'd have it out tomorrow. But it's out. It's out yeah, yesterday. Yeah, no, it's not, I've, I've had the beta for a while. I'm going to say that right now. <laughs> <Beta for a while. laughs> but um, it's so cool because it's like, you know, like I, I almost feel like I was almost like a part of the journey, even though I didn't really do anything. You know, like, you know, like I, I've been seeing you guys kind of work on library odyssey in the back end for so long. Um, and to me, and see, to, to me, like that's another thing. That to me, it's like it's almost like frustrating in a sense, where it's like, um, I guess I'm this. This is where I'm going to kind of put value on stuff, like actual monetary value. Like right now, a library is in terms of like market cap, I think it's like less than a hundred million dollars. When you have like a whole bunch of other different uh, cryptocurrencies that are worth like almost billions and don't provide nearly as much of a value, in my opinion, as library does, you know, uh, which is crazy. You know, and, and that's why I made a video about it a while ago with like my top three altcoins of 2021. And our library is one of them because I'm like, dude, like no one knows about this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I appreciate you saying that. Um, to be honest, I look at the price very infrequently. Um, I'm sure. To me, that's that's yeah. like, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't look at it that much. Um, I can't, uh, I can't decide what people, you know, how much people want to pay for library credits. And to me, that's not as important as like, as being able to put this on library. No, yeah. No, listen, I I, I, I definitely agree with that. And honestly, it probably makes sense because I'm sure it, it would be really hard to work on something when you're constantly monitoring the price. When it goes down, you feel, you know, you don't feel like you want to work on it. And I, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely understand that. But to me, like, because, and, and this is kind of why I, I thought that, and I still think that it can, that in my opinion, that it justifies the price in terms of being like maybe one of the top 100 or whatever it is. Uh, because, you know, assuming the library is going to be the future of content creation, which I wholeheartedly think it is, you know, um, you know, you're going to want to have some form of like a stake or a way to get your content out there. I know, I know Odyssey has a different algorithm than library does, 
in this case. But, you know, that's the only way I was, a- I was able to actually get my content seen in a library, um, as far as I was concerned, because I didn't have, I didn't know that many people in library in the beginning. <laughs> so I was like, all right, screw it. Let me just, because I, I was working at the time, like, let me just throw a whole bunch of my money in the l- library and get my stuff seen. <laughs> you know? Well, hey, uh, it's, uh, you're, a te- you're a technical guy. You're a smart guy. I look forward to people making their own algorithm for Odyssey, right? Like you could yeah. launch your own Odyssey with a better algorithm. I'm not, you know, we, I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing pretty well, yeah. but I don't think we're the best, uh, have the best recommendation algorithm. And we want, you know, 10 Odysseys with different algorithms and people can figure it out. It might even be that there's one algorithm that's better for, um, you know, this kind of video versus one that's more uh, suited for movies versus one that's more suited for like people live streaming their games. You know, it doesn't have to be just one algorithm. I don't know what YouTube does. Um, theirs is really complex. <laughs> right. You know, it's funny. So like, because, you know, I make videos on both because I find that, you know, being on different platforms is the best thing, in my opinion. Um, I, feel like, I, I feel like I've almost gotten used to the YouTube algorithm. But like, I kind of, because, it, it, so if you understand what humans want, then I, then you can understand what the, you, yeah. what the YouTube algorithm is, which is clickbait and <laughs> uh, price predictions, <laughs> unfortunately. <Yeah. laughs> unfortunately. Um, but, so, actually, I, I have a question uh, for you in this case, then. So, you know, like you said, like, having more people start their own, like, front end, whether it be, odd, you know, different types of odysseys, I guess, technically, uh, would be the best case. Yeah. So, could I, in theory, let's just say, put my own website up, let's call it... Um, decentravideo.com or something like that uh, and put all the same videos for, that was, that's on the library protocol on there and theoretically start charging for it. Could I technically do that? Sure. That's crazy. See, that, that's what I love so much about library. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> and peop- and that, that's what I try to explain to so, some of my friends who, uh, who are interested in like, you know, blockchain a little bit. Uh, and it's funny because like I don't think anyone really gets that. Like that that's crazy to me that, that people could do that. Because I know that there's like a it's like a Latin American based uh, library, uh, you know, a medium. Uh, I know there's Odyssey. Are there any other ones that I'm missing? Because I know there's those. There's Library of India. Oh, the India version. There's um, yeah. I mean, there's that. So there's there's Library TV, which was bef- the one before Odyssey. Yeah, um, of course. There was, I mean, there's a there's a guy who made uh, basically a music Odyssey. Oh. And I also just saw a few weeks ago. It's yeah, it's just music, and it it, it looks you know it, it looks very different. It looks much more like a music player, but people upload music to library, so you can have that. Uh, see, that is that is really cool. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that is that's crazy. Even to wrap my head around it today, still is like wow. <laughs> it's then if I were to ask, then Len, like, do you do library full time as well, or is there? I mean, do you have like in the job yeah. library okay so then how do you how do like you guys at library like like pretty much like get funding like how do you guys make money in this case you know we're asking how, how these decentralized protocols make money <laughs> yeah that's the question you can ask it's uh i um yeah so how do we make money uh we uh make it from the coin like we have uh a bunch of it and we sell it slowly um we put out you know credit reports every three months about how we how we spend it and what it's for right. and we have it set aside for you know whatever library needs we have some set aside for the community we have some institutional funds uh, we make money from that um Let's yeah because i think um and you can correct me if i'm wrong here but uh like i know like uh like one of the main things right now that's attracting a lot of people to library are the rewards that you get you know as a creator and as a, as a viewer so those aren't yeah. baked into the code, right? Is that that's just something like where you guys have like a pool of funds that you want to give out to people using the platform? Is that correct? Yeah, and we're we're experimenting with the right way to go. So we, I believe in uh, what I think of as progressive decentralization. So like you start out not that decentralized, you start out basically centralized, and you slowly get more and more and more. Like I don't think of decentralization as a thing you have; it's like a process. Okay. Right, like you can always become more decentralized in a lot of ways. You can um, have more developers working on the project. You can have more copies. You can have more odysseys, like we were saying. Yeah. You can have, you know, you can uh, people talk about how Bitcoin is centralized because of all the mining's in one country. Like you can become right. decentralized that way. And so, so 
longer libraries around, the more I hope everything you see becomes decentralized. The rewards right now is something we're playing with and trying to figure out what people want, what's the best way to do it. I think if we did it decentralized to start with, um, it would be really hard to tweak and it's very easy to get it wrong. Now I think we're getting closer to like, you know, this is becoming more real. This is the, this is what seems to be working well. And so I'd like to move those into the protocol. Right. Um, no, yeah. I mean, because I know you guys, I, I think there were, I don't know if it was the last blog post that you guys had on there, but it was something about getting advertising on the library as well so that'll help enable creators to get paid as well as potential viewers as well. Um, I'm sure that has to be centralized yeah. at first. <laughs> Let's get advertisers on. Yeah. Well, I think that, I don't know. I mean, I assume that can become decentralized at some point. I'm sure there will there will be a decentralized ad network at some point. Um, that's going to be um, on Odyssey. So I think of Odyssey as like the app that's built on top of Library. So Library is the oh, decentralized protocol. Odyssey right. is Odyssey. Odyssey is yeah. Odyssey is like uh, the way we like to explain is Odyssey is like Coinbase, right? right? And Library right. is like Bitcoin. So the so Coinbase is Coinbase, right? You give them your tokens, and they're a centralized company that does whatever they want to do. Right. So that's what Odyssey is, and so Odyssey. <laughs> Um, yeah, they're experimenting with ads. They're experimenting with different ways of monetizing. Library itself um, is a decentralized protocol. Like nobody can force you to watch ads if you're using Library the protocol. Right. Uh, yeah, that is true. See, that makes sense. And actually, I, I, I really, uh, I really like that thought process of kind of like you said, decentralization is more like a progressive thing rather than a goal you reach. It's just like a level of how decentralized you are. <laughs> I, I agree with that. You know, it's funny because I, I wanted to make a video about that. Like, you know, like, like, cause I mean, I think the word decentralized is thrown around so much and I'm guilty of it. I, I, I call everything almost decentralized in, in crypto, <laughs> whether it really is or not, right. because there are different levels of it. Right. Yeah. No, I, I definitely think so. But yeah. I, I do like that. Um, again, especially with the way like library is going and all that. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy because there are a lot of competitors theoretically. I mean, like, uh, I got reached out to the other day by, and they haven't expanded into the U.S. yet, but they're mainly based out of Latin America and I think it was uh, India. I could be wrong on that. Oh, my God. Uh, Vietnam. <laughs> um, yeah. But they're just starting to expand to into the U.S. And I'm looking at all these different competitors. I'm like, okay. It's funny because I'm honestly comparing all of them to library. Because in my opinion, I, I truly think that library is one of the most, if not like the most decentralized protocols that exist currently for a decentralized video. Uh, have you heard of Theta? Are you familiar with Theta? I've heard of it a, a little bit. Like I know it's out there. I don't know exactly how it works. As far as I'm concerned, and I could be wrong on this too, but I think what what they make decentralized is more of like the um like the bandwidth, like the actual streaming of the content itself. So where it's like I can watch someone streaming, and they're mainly a streaming platform, not really a video, uh, like you know hosting platform. Uh, if I'm watching the stream, <laughs> I'm able to pretty much uh, share my excess bandwidth with other people. Um, and I'll get rewarded in their coin for it, their native token, you know? Um, so they, they'll, they'll call that decentralized video streaming. And I remember when I read that, I'm like, that's not decentralized. But I'm like, okay, it's technically a form of decentralization. But in my opinion, that's why I think library mm -hmm. still is the most because, I mean, it's almost to the core itself, right? Where, like you said, um, let's say, let's say, screw it. I don't like the library team. I don't like the Odyssey team. I want to make my own thing. <laughs> I can just take the library, library protocol itself and make my own website and, you know, do it, do whatever I will with it. Uh, but I think that's really cool. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so far, far to ask you as yeah. well, then what are some things you're looking forward to, to create either on top of library or maybe even just personally? Sure. Yeah. I'm happy to answer that. Also, I have to go after that. Oh, okay. um, but that's good. That's good. what am I looking for? <laughs> Sorry. I know. I, uh, but I, this is a, Hey, great place to end. What am I looking forward to? I, I do feel like an optimist, you know, I tend to look to the future and be like, there's going to be some great stuff coming up. What am I looking forward to create on top of library? I am looking forward to it. Our goal this year, I would I would say our goal this year is resilience, is like continuing down the decentralization path. You know, I'd like to see um, more people in the community running wallet nodes. I'd like to see more people in the community um, kind of having the different pieces of library uh, and more people in the community building on top of library, just like the the video player, the um, there's people doing kind of independent stats on library. Uh, I know there's other projects unrelated to library that are doing like, you know, decentralized recommendation algorithms or like 
um, figuring out which people talk to which people on Twitter and kind of being like, here's your, here's your crowd, here's your in-group. Um, so you, all that stuff can happen on library because all of, you know, we have the blockchain, the blockchain is public. You can look at, you know, so many people watch this video, so many people tipped and commented on this video, so many people um, watch these other videos that are related. And I'd love to see more of that stuff. No, yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree. Like, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down. I'm trying to hold myself from, like, standing up and dancing around uh, like, a, like a weirdo. But uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go ahead and end it off there, I guess. <laughs> but it's been yeah. a pleasure speaking with you, of course, this entire time. Honestly, I never thought I'd be speaking to the CTO library. So just saying, okay? <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been an honor, in my opinion, okay? <laughs> I'm glad, and uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time to teach me some stuff. And uh, of course, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk again soon, um, and you know, we'll go from there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Take care. Peace. Thanks.